I'm Eleanor Mosman, a human rights activist and visual storyteller. I went to Virginia Commonwealth University for my undergrad degree. A guy I was dating at the time moved to Shanghai to help his brother who had an architecture firm in Shanghai and asked if I wanted to go. And I said yes. So in 2008, I moved to China. It was a big change. I had a hard time adjusting. I was applying to photo studios for assisting work and I had one studio tell me blatantly, we will not hire women because our clients will not respect you. I started planning a bicycle tour around China. It kind of had to do with this just really big depression I fell into and I knew that I had to change my life in one way or another. It ended up lasting about two years and a bit over 15,000 miles. I ended up wandering all over the country, spent about four or five months in Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and Tajikistan. I got really sick, and so I just decided, okay, no more bike tour, I'll just stay in Xinjiang and spend a couple months documenting Uyghurs and their life and the countryside. The Uyghurs are a group of people persecuted by the Chinese government. They speak a language that's closely related to Turkish and Uzbek. It's its own language. The original intention was not to spend two years on a bicycle, but the further I got, the more I became comfortable with it. Sleeping in culverts under the road, sleeping almost on the side of the road, exposed, riding through the mountains during the winter time. I just became used to it. It just became second nature and was almost like um, uncomfortable became comfortable. I think it was the second month of my bike tour that a man decided that he was going to lock me in a room with him and he was going to have his way with me. And that was not the last time, uh, but it was one of the more intense times. I was able to get away. I would just get so pissed off because when I'm out there on these, these adventures and exped expeditions, I don't see myself as an American. I don't see myself as white. I don't see myself as a woman. I don't see these labels. I'm just existing. And it's like, every time I'd be harassed, it was like, thanks for, thanks for making me remember all that stuff. Like, thanks for making me remember all these labels that I don't want to adhere to. But eventually I get to this point where I'm riding down this gravel road and there's a bunch of Tibetan prayer flags and I see this monk coming towards me and he invites me into his house. I'm tired, I'm hungry, yes, okay. And so in the morning, his sisters were getting dressed to go to the, the market and they were putting on these beautiful gowns of this like deep rich reds and this Tibetan brocade and I started photographing them. And I remember that exact moment, like photographing these women in their home, like I didn't even, I wasn't even existing there. I finally was able to say, yeah, you know, I'm a photographer. Like, I am a photographer. If I had to sum it up in one sentence, when people ask me about it, I'm just like, yeah, I learned to love myself. I was in my early 30s. I was figuring myself out. And most importantly, I figured out what I wanted to do. I started photographing Tibetans and Uyghurs and it was, it just seemed to be my calling. Her photography is giving them a voice and a presence because their culture will disappear, their history. And so her photography is capturing the essence of who they are and what is going on. I'm in awe of her passion and her perseverance. and how much she loves these people. I asked her once, I wish I had the passion she has for something like she has for representing these people, for the persecuted. People talk about, oh, well, as a woman, you have to take different precautions. You have to be more careful. But I also believe 
If you haven't found the benefits or the perks or the strengths of being a woman, like you haven't found your power of being a woman yet. The fact that I am let into households, that mothers give me their children to hold and leave to work in the field while I'm in their house with their children, like I don't think a man would have those options and I know they don't. I've talked to plenty and they're like, you get access that we don't get. So there's a few women that stand out in my mind uh, most vividly and one would be Jamyang Samo and her mother Gayla. Gayla is the matriarch of the household and she has a daughter Jamyang Samo which is which was probably about five or six years younger than me. But I was not just a guest. I learned how to herd yaks. Um, they thought it was very humorous when I could not milk a yak. I helped with food. I just became part of the family. And these women get up before the men, before sunrise, and get to work immediately. And they are the last to go to bed. It is constant work. They live in one of the most difficult environments and they're facing you know, these issues against the government and it's just, it's like every day is, is gonna be a struggle but they face it with just such compassion for one another. So during summer of 2022, I competed in an ultra endurance bicycle race, the Silk Road Mountain Race, which takes place in Kyrgyzstan. It's noted as the most difficult race in the world. I was the only woman from North America to complete the race. A total of three women finished the race. So I arrived in Kyrgyzstan a couple months before the race because I wanted to acclimate. And unfortunately, I was one of the cyclists that got very sick. And during those four or five days of being sick, I was just crying nonstop because I was convinced I wasn't gonna be able to race. And I was just like, it's all gone. It's, you know, it's, it's over. I tried to recover as much as I could. I showed up at the start line and I ended up at the finish line 15 minutes before cutoff. So even with all of that happening, I still finished that race. I've learned what being brave and resilient is all about. And most importantly, I learned those, I learned what that is by uh, watching and living with the women I did out there. They are the ones that are brave and resilient and compassionate. These people showed me who I am. And I also hope that when people see these photographs or hear these stories, the viewer isn't overcome with a sense of hopelessness. I hope it affects them in a way that they can look at their own lives a little differently or look at their own community and you know be inspired by these people that are facing some of the worst injustices that anyone could ever imagine, but they still persevere.